Good afternoon, committee, and welcome to any new member of the public joining the afternoon session of the Western and Southern Area Planning Committee meeting. Before we start the afternoon session, I would like to make a, uh, a roll call of all the committee members to ensure their presence. So I'll start with Councillor Dave Bower. Yes, I'm present, Chair. Thank you, Dave. Uh, Councillor Kelvin Clayton. Yes, I'm here, Chair. Uh, Councillor Susan Cocking. Yes, I'm here, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Jean Dancer. I'm here, Chairman. Thank you. Councillor Nick Arland. Present, Chairman. Thank you. Councillor Paul Kimber. Uh, present, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Louis O'Leary. Present, Chairman. Councillor Kate Weller. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to you. Councillor Sarah Williams. Good afternoon. And, uh, and Councillor John Ware. Present, Chairman. Uh, thank you. Welcome back, and I hope you had a pleasant lunch. We'll be continuing with the agenda as set out in your packs. And we're now going to deal with the uh, uh, fifth uh, application on your uh, agenda, and that's 4E, which is WP2100111 FUL, Weymouth Railway Station, King Street, Weymouth, DT4 4BN. Now, this is for the reconfiguration of Station Forecourt, including alteration to access and parking arrangements, formation of new vehicle exit and public realm works, together with formation of a of pocket park linking King Street and, Julie, and uh, Jubilee's retail park. Uh, and now I am now invite uh, uh, Mr. Hugh Williams, who is the case officer, to introduce this item. Over to you, Hugh. Thank you, Chairman. The, the site location plan is now showing. Um, the application relates to two parcels of land uh, situated to the north of King Street, uh, towards the northern end of Weymouth Town Centre. The larger parcel uh, extends to approximately half a kilometre, uh, half a hectare, uh, and comprises um, the railway station forecourt and adjacent uh, car park where reconfiguration works are proposed. Uh, the smaller parcel um, is the land being referred to as the pocket park land, um, extends to approximately 800 square metres, uh, includes a pathway and um, a section of the former Weymouth Quay branch lines, branch line where, where railway tracks currently remain uh, and which comprises a non-designated heritage asset. The Swannery car park is located a short distance to the west of, of the sites uh, and the beach a short distance to the east. The Jubilee retail park uh, situated sort of to the north of the two, the two parcels. The buildings along King Street on the southern side of King Street and along Queen Street uh, contain a mix of commercial and residential uses. Um, and for those not familiar with the terminology of pocket park, um, a pocket park is a, essentially a small area of public space or public realm uh, where people may relax, socialise, exercise or play. The aerial photograph from 2017 um, shows, shows the land uh, comprising the pocket park area. Uh, as, as consisting of an existing hard surfaced uh, pathway uh, and the adjacent um, form, former railway line um, running between Quick, Quick Fit, uh, the Quick Fit Car Repair Centre and the DIY, uh, b &Q DIY Superstore uh, and linking between King Street in the south and the Jubilee Close uh, entrance to the retail park at the north. Um, 
the existing station forecourt arrangement incorporates a, a roundabout or, or turnaround and drop off area uh, with with various provision for vehicle uh, vehicle drop off and waiting uh, as well as as, as as bus and taxi movements. Um, it operates from a uh, an entrance um, in off off King Street and an exit out on onto Queen Street. Uh, with um, access to the car park currently um, uh, again in from the same entrance uh, and exiting via the, via the rat, rat roundabout arrangement. The proposals map of the adopted local plan um, shows the uh, sh sh shows both sites entirely within the development boundary for Weymouth. Uh, and both also within the town centre strategy area um, and um, the forecourt and car park both both also within uh, the more tightly drawn town centre area the um, the the forecourt and car park are also contained within the station area and swannery car park designation to which uh, policy WA, WEY3 applies um, with the town set the wider town centre strategy area being subject to uh, area policy uh, way one. The um, the boundary for the designated town centre town centre conservation area is shown red on the adopted local plan and runs along the southern side of King Street. Uh, cutting across um, the eastern section of the station forecourt. This plan again show, shows the extent of the designated conservation area, the pocket park entirely outside uh, and much of the um, larger parcel also outside. Um, within the conservation area, there are listed buildings on the southern side of um, King Street sh shown here with the red stars and also um, other locally listed buildings. The, um, the Environment Agency's flood map for planning shows that part, parts of the sites or parts of the um, forecourt and car park site are at elevated risk of flooding, um, but the application is supported by a flood risk assessment uh, and with the proposals primarily involving uh, the continuation of existing usage um, and the introduction of additional permeable landscaping and minor improvements to existing drainage systems, um, the development's not considered to increase flood risk. Um, preparatory works are proposed in various locations within the car park and for forecourt court area, which, which amongst other matters would include um, the lowering and removal of sections of a brick wall uh, enclosing enclosing the car park, um, removal of, of existing curb stones, street furniture and, and surfaces, um, as well as the removal of several trees and, and other vegetation. Um, the trees to be removed are shown shown on this plan uh, by the by the red circles. Um, there are other trees um, particularly between between these two that are that are to be retained um, and vegetation removal is also proposed and, and tree removal from within the uh, the center of the turnaround area. Uh, some of the some of the materials to be removed and other features to be removed uh, are to be set aside for reuse within the scheme. Key elements of the proposed reconfiguration arrangement uh, would see uh, the introduction of a revised road layout through through the station forecourt, with the vehicle turning turn turnaround area uh, being removed to, to be replaced um, by a, a single roadway through through uh, in front of the station um, with a pedestrian area at the junction between King Street and Queen Street. A dedicated bus stop um, within the new roadway for Wessex uh, bus services um, and uh, taxi 
and shared <coughs> drop off bays. Uh, so, sorry, taxi and sh shared waiting areas also alongside the roadway. Um, the existing passenger drop off bays would be relocated uh, into the car park um, where there would also be an additional uh, disabled space and relocated cycle stands. Um, and more generally within the scheme, uh, a number of you see, you see, you see the retained trees uh, at the, at the, at the, in front of the station for in front of the station and uh, new landscaping and planting, including a number of new new trees within the pedestrian area. The proposal also includes formation or provision of new pedestrian crossings uh, across, across the roadway and the creation of a new um, access onto King Street such that uh, parking movements for the car park would be uh, in from the existing entrance uh, but out, out via, via the new entrance uh, via the new access. The proposals for the pocket park um, include the retention of the existing um, hard surfaced area shaded blue on this plan, um, but the removal of uh, existing walling and fencing that separate that plan from the former railway line, uh, that path from the former railway line, um, with the path being widened, um, but the widened sections of the path being um, a permeable uh, gravel style type type surface um, with the uh, with features uh, surviving features fr from the railway incorporated into the into the park landscape including uh, retained sleepers um, and uh, crossing gates that are currently uh, located at the northern end of, of the site uh, together with 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 tree planting at various points and um, wildflower flower areas. The scheme for the pocket park also incorporates surface water management um, through primarily through infiltration, uh, but with connections to existing mains infrastructure. Um, Few photographs to illustrate the site context. This being from King, King Street, looking uh, northeast towards the railway station, with the uh, with, with the trees around the turnaround area. Uh, this further along King Street, looking looking north, um, again, uh, and a number of the trees around around the uh, turnaround area and the, and some of the soft landscaping. In the centre of the area are to be removed, um, others to be retained. The two of the trees, two of these four trees, are, 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 to, are to, to be removed, two to be retained. Uh, the landscaping within the centre of, of the turnaround area would be taken down to ground floor, ground level, um, but the replacement area includes additional trees and further soft landscaping. As a view looking west along King Street um, with the existing car park wall, sections of which are to be removed, other, other parts to be lowered. Uh, the new the new entrance onto King Street from the car park, be it its towards its western end, uh, the tree to be retained. There's a view from King Street looking north into the pocket park area. Um, the existing surface pathway uh, running alongside the B&Q store um, and the nature of the former railway with the with the tracks still present, uh, but the area generally being somewhat untidy. Um, and this is a view from the from Jubilee Close at the northern end of, of, the, of the pocket park, the, um, the gates, uh, the crossing gates to be incorporated as landscape features with, within the park the uh, the fence and the walling that separate the existing path to be to be to be removed um, there'll be some level regrading to even out the levels between the existing hard surface 
uh, and slightly lower levels it's at sections sections along the railway line. Um, since the since the report was prepared, we've had a letter of support from Southwestern Railway, um, who have been involved in working with the uh, with the applicant to produce the scheme. Um, the letter acknowledges the ambition of Weymouth Town Council to see even more integration of bus services at the station, um, but notes that this will need to be part of a much wider master planning exercise. Uh, although it's, it, it, confidence is expressed that the proposed scheme uh, is an excellent first stage and an exciting opportunity to make Weymouth st Station the gateway it deserves to be. The letter also states that, that nothing in the plans prevents further enhancements and improvements at a later stage uh, and, and that it's therefore it's, it's important that the, the investment is, is, is not therefore going to be wasted. Um, and uh, comments that's important to take advantage of the funding opportunity now to deliver some immediate benefits uh, in particularly in time for for the summer 2022. Save for the letter of support, um, there'd be no other updates to the report. Um, the recommendation being that, commit, that the committee indicate that they're minded to grant planning permission subject to the conditions set out in paragraph 11.1 of the report. Um, and that concludes the presentation. Thank you very much, Ian. It's a good presentation. I understand that there are no written representations uh, on this particular item, but I'd now like to invite uh, uh, Councillor John Orrell, who's the ward member, to address the committee. Um, good afternoon, uh, John. <coughs> good afternoon. Thank you, Chair. That's all right, you've got three minutes, John, so, so over to you. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I'm uh, going to recommend a support for the scheme very much along the lines of Southwest Railway, um, but taking account of that it is very much the first stage. That I'm, the, the Town Council put an objection in, mainly probably out of frustration that we, we're not delivering an integrated transport interchange. Uh, which is what we're really hoping for. Um, many members were at the bus strategy seminar earlier this week and we were hearing ambitious plans to how to enhance our public transport network. One key bit would be to integrating that with railway stations so people can have seamless public transport and that would address the climate emergency. The town council will help you this would deliver it but it is very much um, a first stage, so we don't want to see it. I don't want to see it lost because this is a great funding opportunity, but I would want to make sure that it's um, designed in such a way that it can be quite easily integrated and upgraded to a proper transport exchange. I'll come back to that. Um, going sideways, the Pocket Park, excellent idea, very keen on that. It's um, a very neglected, uh, unloved bit of land and it can become much more useful. It'll be integrate to the cycle network uh, much more safely than at present and would also enhance the uh, improvements. There's one million pound upgrade of the Radical Park Gardens and that will, this will uh, form a unity with that and uh, improve the whole area. So very much in favour of that. So coming back to the the main site, which you've got in, on your slides, the, the the two things I'd like to suggest, um, it, it's it's pretty it's pretty good. Um, if we if we're thinking of upgrading in the future to a proper bus exchange, uh, what would be great is if what this new circuit they've got, which goes out to King Street on the western side, on the left side of your diagram. Uh, at the moment, that's only strong enough to take cars and it'd be quite sensible at this first phase that that exit was made strong enough to take buses. That way, if we get more funding and get a proper interchange, the car park can very easily be moved to the other side of B&Q where there is an existing car park which is unused and has a connection to the railway station. That way, buses can come onto this new car park relatively simply. So it's just making the most of this opportunity and rather than having to go back and relay the junction to make sure it's strong enough for buses now, 
that way it'll be ready for the next phase of a proper interchange. And the second one, props a smaller point, uh, we're losing a few trees, which I bitterly regret, but there you go. Uh, we're getting some new ones. The the other part, uh, the western, the, the very far left of your diagram, uh, the border with the B&Q uh, uh, warehouse units is remarkably ugly, razor wire. It looks like an industrial estate. It'd be good to have a condition to uh, to ensure that there was proper landscaping, either trees or screening along there. I think the project board is quite minded to do that, but it'd be nice to make sure it happens rather than just hope it happens. So those are my two suggestions. But with those provisos, I'm in favour of it. We don't want you to lose the funding and it's a good first step towards a proper exchange. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Allen. That's, uh, that's uh, very interesting. Um, I'm going to go back to uh, to Mr. Hugh Williams just to respond with any salient points you may wish to clarify. Uh, uh, nothing really to add, Chair. I mean, it's sa sa safe to say that the both the applicant and um, the, the 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 letter from uh, Southwestern Rail sort of do do address the. Uh, Comments about 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 breast interchange. Um, the scheme the scheme is designed being mindful of uh, an in, an intended means of operation, um, and both the applicant and others have 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 sort of highlighted that if um, uh, if 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 wider if 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 more um, provision is to be made for buses. Um, at this location, there will be knock on implications for junctions elsewhere that would need to be reconfigured uh, in, or, in order to then to then work with with a, with a, um, a sort of comprehensive transport interchange in this location. Um, so my, my my advice is that the application should be determined as as sort of as proposed um, with, 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 without uh, without without requirements for for changes to highway infrastructure, which, which may not be consistent with with junction arrangements beyond the application site boundary. Thank you, Hugh. That, that, that's fine. Good response on that. All right. Are there any uh, points to be raised by? Um, Mr. C Steve Savage from Highways. Uh, good afternoon, Steve. Good afternoon, Chairman. I've no, no points to raise. I just would uh, reiterate what Hugh's just mentioned to you. The um, the Western Access, as submitted, is designed to accommodate cars, of course. The access crossing itself, um, the access across the footway, as it were, will be subject to Section 18 for the Highways Act with regards to construction. Um, mm. The internal specification for the car park will be a matter for the applicant to determine. If at a later date this needed to be upgraded to um, take buses, there are other criteria, as you mentioned, that we'd have to consider with regards to junction spacing, the alignment, the radii into the site, the practicalities of getting the bus in and out. But as he quite rightly said, the um, the application before us is the one that we're considering and um, the access, as you can see, there is suitable to serve cars. I don't think it precludes in the future any um, any other use other than the fact that it may have to be slightly redesigned or um, strengthened, as it were. But other than that, Chairman, I've got nothing else to add. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. And, and it's nice to see you. OK, right, uh, uh, members. Uh, are there any um, questions of a technical nature that yes. you'd like to ask of the case officer or highways? Who we've uh, got first? Yes, Chairman, got number. Uh, first is Councillor Kate Weller. OK, hello, Kate. Um, right, off to you. Thank you very much. This is a very quick one, Hugh. Can you just confirm that the uh, traffic movement, car movement through the front of the station will be as it is now? So coming through in front of the station, um, you will have to turn right into Queen Street and back into King Street you won't be able to turn left and go into the park district from that that point there so no change in that traffic movement basically that 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 that, that is correct the 
um, it, it, it's in solely from King Street and taxis only uh, to turn to turn left to Queen Street. Move movements south along Queen Street are still are still are still enabled. Thanks. Thanks very much. That, that, that's what I thought. I just need confirmation. Thank you. OK, thank you. Any uh, other questions of the text? Next is Councillor Jean Dunseith. Uh, OK, Jean, over to you. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I was just wondering how many car park spaces will be lost for the new exit onto King Street? Because at the moment it's about 50 car park spaces, so some will obviously be lost. And I just wondered how many from that exit will traffic be able to turn right as well as left? The third thing is because it looks as though behind the roundabout will be filled in, you will be losing 18 spaces where buses and taxis now park. And I just wondered where is it proposed that the taxis will park and wait? And I can see there are, there's a little bit of space in front uh, now, but I, I just wondered, will that make up the 18 spaces that they're going to lose? I did think about the footway because that would need to be lowered, but that's already been addressed. And has anyone given any thought or are there any plans for motorcycle parking spaces. Thank you, Chairman. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Jean. Um, right, I'll, I'll hand you back to uh, to uh, Hugh to answer the the direction question and the and the parking questions and motorcycle parking areas. Over to you. Uh, th th there is there is some general reconfiguration of parking um, both within and sort of adjacent to um, uh, to, to, to the existing car park. The, 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 the blue spaces are uh, intended as the um, sort of short term drop off um, provision with longer term parking available uh, further into the into the space. Um, the opening up of the new access does does result in the loss of I think it's two spaces uh, in order to accommodate the access. Um, I don't have a figure to hand of the um, total parking provision within the entire forecourt area uh, for sort of direct comparison. Um, the, 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 there is a, a, an, an overall loss of um, uh, space dedicated for parking, um, but that is intended to achieve public realm enhancements in an in an area that that, are, that that that's recognised as as being um, as, as as not performing well as in, in its gateway function currently. The um, bus stop within 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 the within the proposed roadway uh, is is intended uh, specifically for for Wessex services, um, and then there are um, taxi waiting waiting bays. Uh, in, in this location and what are intended as shared purpose waiting uh, effectively for non Wessex buses and taxis uh, in this area here. There's also uh, a, an, a provision for uh, another Wessex bus stop on the road in King Street. Um, motorcycle parking was was raised by um, the highways liaison engineer with the suggestion that there is that, that, that there is potential for for provision um, in in the area that's also identified um, for for cycle parking um, that hasn't yet been incorporated into the scheme but but I understand can be and and that the intention is that it will be um, in in terms of in terms of addressing the the operational require operational requirements for for traffic movement and parking the highways authority are satisfied that this this arrangement is is acceptable there there are, there are other places to park in the near locality um 
if if parking is not available here um accommodating providing more <laughs> provide making more provision for for parking within within this area um will ultimately be be to the detriment of the public realm benefits that the scheme is is focused on or par par partly focused on providing Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Councillor Dancy, does that answer your questions? Uh, it, no, one more question. Can okay. traffic turn right as well as left on the exit onto King Street? Yeah, that's what I was going to mention. Um, I, I believe that, that yes, you can. Um, but perhaps to further Steve on that, I, I believe you are allowed to turn right over hatch markings of this form through you chair if that's okay yes you can turn right and left the keep clear markings under the highway code encourage the drivers not to enter the white line markings the hatchings if you like you should only enter those if it's clear and safe to do so so in answer to your question councillor dunseith the intention is yeah, they can turn right and left out of this exit um motorcycle parking if i can just take up from hugh we've got no specific requirement for motorbike parking the motorbikes could park in the car spaces if need be um the the intention of this I, my understanding here is that there was one additional space provided overall there were 51 spaces there are 52 according to the application form as an authority and as a highway authority in particular we're trying to discourage the um, reliance on the motor vehicle so if we provide too much car parking here, it's going to encourage people to drive. I think the intention, the overall intention of this it will be a travel interchange, encouraging alternative and sustainable motor transport. So as a highway authority, we're happy with the layout that's provided. We're happy with the means of access there too, which is why we've had no objection, Chair. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Uh, and uh, thank you, Steve. Councillor uh, Dunsey, does that uh, now answer all your queries? Yes, thank you, Chairman. Okay, any other questions of a technical nature? Yes, Chairman, your councillor, Paul Kimber. Paul Kimber. Okay, Paul, you go ahead. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, for the, thank you for the uh, presentation. Um, I will be supporting this, but I, I'm supporting it with a heavy heart. I feel as though there's a lost opportunity for bus integration, and I just wondered. Obviously, it must have been part of the uh, initial discussions because I know uh, in my latter days of Weymouth and Portland Borough Council, we were talking with first buses about better uh, integration. Uh, I just wondered if you can tell me what your thinking is on this uh, for, the, you know, for the future, because obviously we've got the climate emergency and uh, I, I, we've got to well, I think I'll have to face Ray sometime. He may have to tell, tell me as, as to why we didn't look at climate emergency more. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, thank you, Paul. Um, um, do you want to come back on that at all, um, at all here? Uh, um, in, service integration is one of the uh, key objectives within 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 the project um, but clearly the local plan recognizes that there is potential for um, wider and more comprehensive uh, improvements for transport integration um, the the application proposal has has come forward through the Dorset Coast forum um, and in part reflects reflects uh, funding being made available to deliver this 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 part of the, 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 these works. Um, it with it within the scope of the project that's that's here for determination. Um, the. Uh, the transport operators and the applicants um, consider this to be a, a significant improvement to the to the existing interchange mm. arrangements. Um, 
I don't think anybody is claiming that the that, that, that it is uh, um, a, a sort of f fully comprehensive transport interchange hub um, but the pro but the project is constrained by by the available resource um, it, what what it what is intended is to improve the existing arrangement um, in in line with planning policy um, but it, and and without prejudicing further future enhancement uh, and it's on that basis that the the application is recommended for approval okay thank you Right. Do we have any more technical questions? Uh, uh, yes, Chairman Kelvin Clayton is next. OK, thank you very much indeed. Uh, over here to you, uh, Councillor Clayton. Thank you, Chair. Um, two very quick questions. Am I right in assuming it could only accommodate one bus at a time? And secondly, um, it was mentioned as a facility for cycle storage. How many cycles can it store? Uh, in, in terms of in terms of bus provision, um, there's a dedicated bus stop uh, for Wessex bus services uh, within, within within the roadway. The the, the lay by opposite um, is intended for multi-purpose use, so that if other buses were um, arriving or leaving, uh, this may be available. The spaces here are, are predominantly for primarily for taxi use. Uh, but there is also a second bus stop um, within King Street. Uh, my understanding is that the proposals um, as designed uh, are, are intended to serve um, to, 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 to accommodate up to four uh, bus routes um, operated, anticipated to be operating in, in, in the summer months and that that is in line with, with uh, operator requirements. Um, as far as the cycle stands is concerned, they're being essentially relocated from this area here uh, to, um, to to locations here. And my my the, the my understanding is some of them are covered and others are um, at the sort of Sheffield stands. Um, I don't think I have an exact number, but I'm just counting them out. Looks at like one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, eight Sheffield stands. And difficult to judge, but um, probably four or five within within that area. Mm. OK, thank you. Is that, is that OK? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's a bit disappointing, but um, yeah. Right. Uh, any more technical questions, uh, Councillor Williams? Uh, yeah, next is Councillor Sarah Williams. Sarah Williams. OK, Sarah, go ahead. Yeah. Thank you. You partly answered my question, which was on recycling. Um, can you tell me whether this is going to be an increase on cycle parking? And my other point is, um, could we look at the opportunity of putting a electrical charging point on for cyclists as a great increase in electric electric cycles into this site? And also a question on safety and whether um, cycles being tucked in the corner, whether people are there's going to be any sort of CCTV um, cameras in that area to make people confident in parking their cycles there. OK, Councillor uh, Williams, would you like to uh, respond to that, uh, Hugh? Um, I, th I think, yes, there is additional cycle parking. The intention is that the arrangement is, 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 is an enhancement. Um, I, I think it's quite important the committee bear in mind that they are here to determine what's being proposed rather than to design the scheme uh, for for the applicant. That the, the there there is existing and the intention is there will be continued CCTV operation in 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 operation. Um, part of the justification for removing uh, some of the existing trees relates to the fact that the trees obscure CCTV. Um, surveillance of parts of the forecourt, forecourt area. Um, I don't. I, I'm. I'm. I'm struggling to see um, a reason why uh, the uh, 
number of cycle parking spaces or this precise positioning of, of CCTV cameras would be a reason for um, refusal or, or going against the recommendation to grant planning permission. Okay, thank you for your answers. Uh, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Do we have any more um, technical questions, Councillor Lewis? Yes, you have Councillor Kate Weller again and then Councillor Ireland. Okay, I'll take you first then, uh, Councillor Weller. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate being allowed to come back in. Um, it's following on from a question that Councillor Clayton just asked. I have to say, I think I think the statement is a bit, a bit disappointing. I think it's more than a bit disappointing that there is only one bus stop. I'm just wondering whether, Hugh, you can confirm that. You mentioned, or I don't know whether it was Hugh or whether it was the transport um, representative, but there are, there are this, this, there's provision for four bus routes coming through this front area, um, but I believe it's four bus routes, one bus stop. I'd quite like a confirmation of that because, of course, through the summer months, um, particularly the Weymouth to Portland bus, because of the congestion of the town, that bus regularly runs late and there can be two or three number one Portland buses arriving on site at the same time if they're sharing one bus stop and possibly with three other routes um, I can see huge congestion before we even we even start on that so as I say it is rather more than disappointing it's uh, uh, it's disastrous I think um, can you confirm that it is just one bus stop yeah I'll, I'll hand that back to you for, to respond thank you as, as I've tried to explain previously, there's a bus stop, uh, provision for a bus stop within King Street. Uh, there is provision for a bus stop uh, dedicated for Wessex services um, uh, with, with it, within this area. The this this section is 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 labelled on the plan as rail replacement buses only. Right, thank you. Um, so, so this isn't intended to be uh, in day to day use as a bus stop, but the um, the purple hatched area opposite is um, is a is a sort of multi purpose uh, um, waiting area, which so which would which... be an overspill, Hugh, if if required. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. That 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 really I, I wanted to be sure that um, because I can foresee congestion there, I wanted to be sure that there was some sort of contingency in that event. And and clearly we hope that we won't too often need the replacement bus for the train service. It does happen quite often, but hopefully not too often. Thank you. Thanks very much. Uh, thank you, Councillor. That's right. Do we have anyone else? Uh, uh, Sorry, you have Councillor Nicole, and then I, I would like to ask. Oh, you. yeah, of course there is. Yeah. Sorry, Nick. Um, over to you, Nick. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Sorry, I'm, I'm going back to the cycling again because I'm now a bit confused. Um, can Mr Williams confirm that provision of secure covered cycling is part of the application and that it, it is a condition that if we approve it will be built? And I think he should also elaborate on the provision of electric vehicle charging points in the scheme. OK, I hand you back uh, uh, to Hugh. Um, the, the notation on the plan in relation to cycle facilities reads proposed location of new cycle facilities by network rail. Um, the, uh, the the details of, of, of the of the facilities um, are you know th that 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 is the extent of the information that, that, that that's that's there. Um, if you feel that a condition requiring further details of of uh, um, cycle parking, um, electric charging, or or any other facilities um, that that are consistent with the proposals within the scheme, then conditions can be applied. Conditions should only be applied if they if they're considered to be necessary um, to make the development acceptable. I, I don't I don't personally think that those sorts of conditions are uh, fall within that category. Um, 
it is not unusual for a rail operator to have control of um, parking, um, cycle parking and, and, and other arrangements within a station forecourt. I don't think it, it, members should feel that, that installing um, uh, electric charging points um, is a key, key determinant of whether or not these proposals are acceptable or not. But that's a matter for the committee. Can I can I come back on that, Chairman? Yes, yeah, I'm just going to hand back to you, Nick, just to say you want to elaborate. I, I, I can accept. Um, well, if the car park is under control of Network Rail, um, which I'm sure Mr. Williams will confirm, I guess it's up to them whether they provide EV charging points. But you know, this council has declared a climate emergency, and we're trying to propose and encourage you know greener forms of transport. So I, I'll just park that for now. But um, in terms of cycle provision, I. The, the ability to actually put your bike on a on a train is extremely limited and we have five carriages in Weymouth. Um, I think one of them can take um, uh, cycles, three cycles, I think. So if we're trying to encourage people to cycle rather than drive to, to Weymouth tra train station and catch a train to wherever happens that they go, uh, commuting hopefully, we should be providing facilities to leave your bike there and you can be pretty sure it'll still be there when you come back. And the words, you know, integration, transport interchange has been mentioned loads of times already today in this article. And if we don't have some sort of condition to ensure that you know, network rail do provide those, I can't see the point. You know, it's, it's just meaningless words. Um, we should be encouraging cycle use and I will be posing later. But we do have a condition for cycle storage. Thank you. OK. Right, OK. Um, can I ask a question, Chairman? You can. Uh, Thank you. Absolutely, Eric. You um, on the path between QuickFit and B&Q, are the uh, former, formerly used railway lines going to be removed? The, tra the tracks do need to be removed, um, uh, but the landscaping of the of, of the park incorporates uh, fe features, um, retain, retained railway features, which I believe in part will include uh, sections of the existing track, mm. but the but the levels are such that they do need to be removed in order to um, uh, grade out the difference in levels between between the existing surface path and the intended uh, and, and the widened path. Mm. Uh, that's fine. It's just, yeah, that's fine. That was, that was my question. Thank you. Do we have any other questions of a technical um, nature? None of a technical nature, Chairman. I just wanted to to bring up with you. There was a mention when uh, uh, Councillor Oral was uh, uh, doing his uh, his presentation of a. Uh, the, the possibility of a, obtaining a condition for landscaping down towards that that fence that's got barbed wire on the top, and I was wondering if that had been uh, considered. The, the the detail on the plan is that the um, sorry, it's not going to show up very well on on this this version, but the the, the notation here uh, is that the um, fencing along along this boundary is to be retained. Um, I can't be 100% certain whether the control of that fencing is uh, whether whether it's being queues or or with it with it within the control of the applicant. But the proposal is that it that it's retained. OK, and as far as landscaping is concerned, would that be down to the developer or or would that be responsibility of the landowner? The, the the proposals are for sort of public realm works, um, and and the landscaping is 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 part of the proposals. Uh, the the there's a condition requiring that the schemes carried out in accordance with the approved plans, um, and there's a condition recommended uh, for implementation of the biodiversity mitigation plan, which which includes uh, the, the the proposed soft landscaping measures and tree planting. Um, 
I, I, I'd, I'd be reluctant to, um, uh, to, to, to to recommend imposing a condition on a on a on on a boundary that's existing and established and to which no change is being proposed. I, I, I don't I don't consider that to be necessary to make this development acceptable. Okay. All right. That, does that conclude all the technical questions, Louis? Uh, it no? does, Chairman. Right. Okay. All right. Well, then, in that case, and that uh, uh, that completes the technical stage. And there's no technical questions for the highways. No. 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 I'm here. In that case, I now open the debate to members and who we wishing to speak first. Councillor John Worth first. Uh, John. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Chairman, and thank you to the officer for his very comprehensive report. I think that the proposed plan is uh, a much improved development for the Weymouth Gateway area. And on that basis, I would like to propose that um, we go forward with, um, and I support it as a minded to, uh, to support the uh, officer's recommendation. Thank you, John. Okay. Do we, do we wish, is there anyone else wishing to speak or do we have a seconder? Um, I'm happy to second, but I mean, I just want to say, you know, I do think there are some problems with this scheme. I would like to have seen, you know, a more integrated bus service. I am sad to see the loss of car parking spaces. Um, no matter what we say, um, especially people going away for a long period of time, um, they're not going to be carrying bags of luggage down on a, on a bicycle, you know, cars are a key part of getting to and from places like the train station um so that is sad to see i mean in regards to the congestion problem um the problem is that this area is notoriously um complicated in terms of navigating with one way this you can't turn this way you can't turn that way um the real problem is you can't turn right on the esplanade from king street but um so no i think there is there is this plan is by no means perfect but it is far better than what we got which is why i'm happy to second councillor worth OK, we, we have to go with what's before us. Yeah, um, exactly. And uh, the non uh, uh, interest, interest which doesn't affect the actual application need to be dealt with elsewhere, really. Any, anyone else wishing to speak? Not here, Chairman, no. Not, not. OK, we've got a uh, members, we've got a proposer and Councillor a second. Weller, Chairman, sorry, Councillor Well has just come in. OK. Councillor Weller, would you like would you like to uh, contribute? Yes, Chairman. Thank you. I'm sorry for 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 the delay on that, um, Councillor O'Leary. I uh, forgot to press return. Um, uh, I I was involved in the early program uh, of discussions on this, and sadly not uh, in this current re uh, iteration. Um, and the earlier discussions were very very much more in terms of an integrated. Um, hub and I appreciate that we're now we have the constraints of funding uh, much reduced funding and I think it would be a huge shame to lose that funding um, but what I'm concerned about is that we all know that this is really only half of the scheme that we properly want and I'm not sure that we've future proofed this scheme so that when if and when and hopefully it's when um, more money is available, that we aren't having to undo things um, in order to improve the scheme in the way that we'd like to. For example, Councillor Oral's suggestion that the uh, exit road is made strong enough to, to take buses at the time that that would, would be appropriate to do so. I, I always hate the idea of us doing something, you know, with a view that well, we, we can knock it down and do something else a bit later because that's such a waste of resources and money and everything else. Um, you know, the existing uh, traffic on the King Street is is horrendous and the idea of buses parking, uh, stopping to offload and unload on onto that street, adding to that congestion, I find um, extraordinary. Uh, trying to turn right out of the garage at the moment is way now nigh impossible unless uh, some kind person lets you out um, and we're putting a road in there for people to be coming out and if those people get off a train all at the same time they're all going to be wanting to come out at the same time 
Um, so we're actually adding to the problems that we've got, although we are enhancing the, the, the uh, area in, in many ways, like Councillor Oral, I really welcome the idea of the pocket park. I think that that will be um, a huge improvement there. But I would like to suggest that we do, um, and I understand uh, Mr Williams' uh, reticence, but I think we should put um, a, a condition in there that that boundary fence is also improved and enhanced because all the work we do to enhance the rest of the area will be undermined by that really, really ugly razor wire remaining there. Um, so we should be trying to um, improve that, I think, and I would like that condition there if, if it's possible to do so. Um, I, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a huge shame that we're not undertaking the whole scheme because we all know that we need the whole scheme. And if we really are committed to tackling climate change, we have to make it um, uh, uh, favourable. We have to make it uh, possible for people to use public transport. And this does very little towards that, really. Um, Councillor O'Leary, if, if buses were OK, you could put your suitcase on the bus yeah. and get to the station. But currently, that is an impossibility. I don't want to leave my car in a station car park for a week. I can absolutely assure you of that. Um, and if I could get on a bus with my suitcase, I would happily do so. But that's not possible at the moment. It's not going to be possible with this scheme either, sadly. So I will support it because like um, Councillor Oral, I don't want us losing this funding. But I do wish that we'd done a little bit more about planning for the future improvements of the scheme, not just doing a half-baked scheme now. And I, I do feel that this is what this is. It's a half-baked scheme. but a scheme is better than no scheme, um, but only marginally in my view. Thank you very much. Sorry for that rant, Chairman, but I do feel strongly that um, uh, Southwest Rail uh, have let us down on this because um, they want us to use their services, but they don't make it easy for us to do so. Thank you for your comments, Kate. Uh, 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 Councillor Weller. Uh, Take your point fully. OK, um, um, Councillor, you, uh, Chairman, you've got um, Philip Crowther wants to come in, but you've got Councillor Dunseith in Ireland before him, but I'm not sure if he wants to make a, a legal point. Uh, yeah, can, is, it, is it OK, uh, uh, Councillor Dunseith, if I bring uh, bring the solicitor in before you? Absolutely, Chairman. OK, OK, go ahead. Thank you, Chairman. I, I just wanted to reiterate to members the point that um, he made that you can only impose conditions to make something which is unacceptable in the proposal acceptable in planning terms. You can't impose conditions simply because you think that the proposal can itself be improved and you shouldn't be imposing conditions um, to force this scheme to rectify pre-existing conditions, I, uh, a pre-existing situation. So I, either you consider that the scheme is uh, is good enough as it is, or that you ha can only impose conditions if they are necessary to make it acceptable, not not just a desire to do something better. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you for that, uh, that point, uh, uh, Scrowler. OK, uh, right, um, uh, uh, Councillor Dancy, if you wanted to come in. Thank you, Chairman. I think there's some good aspects to this um, this scheme. I do agree. Oh. Oh, I've got that on. Whoops, sorry, I came on and sorry about that. I do agree with the separation of traffic so that you seem to have cars going one way and coaches and taxis going the other way. And the three extra dropping off spaces, I'm very pleased to see and the extra disabled space. Those are all good things. But I have to agree with the Weymouth Civic Society to the specifically the forecourt area, the public area behind what was called the roundabout. It's a bit bland and at the moment it's a bit over, overgrown with broken paving slabs. 
We do need a space that's inviting for people who travel and walk through the area. And I hope this is going to be incorporated into the scheme, maybe benches, planters, etc. At the moment, it doesn't look as though anyone really cares about the area. It is in the nature of areas like this. And I think this reflects on Weymouth. Now this area, together with the station area, this is, you could call it the front page of Weymouth if you like, and it sets the tone. This is the first site of Weymouth, the town, the area, that many visitors will get. And you want it to be the best site, because just up King Street, there's a beautiful bay with the sea and everything. So I, I would just like to say to the developers, to the planners, that, that I would really like to see this public space between King Street and what was called the roundabout, purposeful, inviting and welcoming, and not just drab, dreary, concrete slabs. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, thank you, uh, Cassie Dancy. Quite taking on that. Do we have any other speakers, uh, Cassie? Uh, Cass we have Councillor Nick Arlen, Chairman. Right. Okay, okay Nick. Thank Back you, Louis. Thank you, Chairman. Um, following uh, Mr. Crowder's intervention, I, I won't be in trying to impose a condition about cycling. Um, instead, I'll be voting against this. Um, I find I, I, I'm never convinced by the argument that you should be spending money on the basis that you might lose it. Um, it always gets spent somewhere else. And as, as Councillor Weller and Councillor Dunseeth and Councillor O'Leary have intimated, the whole area needs a lot more work. It needs a, a far better integration. It needs being able to turn onto the Esplanade from King Street. Um, I, I, I went out during lunch. I needed to go buy some dog food. And I, I drove down the Esplanade and turned into King Street. And I had two people walk straight in front of my car. Um, OK, I've got an electric car. They can't hear it, but you're not allowed to cross there. And yet people do. And that is a problem which has existed for ever since I've lived here 20 odd years and it still hasn't been resolved, which is rather bizarre. And I just don't think spending money polishing, polishing and you know what springs to mind. Um, I just don't think it's ambitious enough. I don't think it integrates with any of the, the ambitions Weymouth and the Civic Society and the Town Council have. And I, I just think it's, we should just park it and come up with something when we can actually do something that makes any difference. Thank you, Councillor Allen. Uh, just to reiterate, of course, what uh, what uh, the sister said, we we are debating what's before us. Uh, you know, we may have aspirations on uh, on things that we would like, but it, this is what it is, and you know, and it's us to it's up to us to decide whether it's acceptable as it stands uh, or not. And uh, so, I just want to reiterate. Do we have any other uh, one when anyone? I was wanting to speak. Uh, uh, well, uh, Councillor Kimber does, but Mr. Crowther's also requested to come back, so I don't know if you want to. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if if Councillor Kimber's, uh, if oh, Councillor Kimber, can I take this list first? Absolutely. Yeah, thank you. Over to uh, uh, Mr. Crowther. Uh, thank you, Chairman. I, I just wanted to respond to um, Councillor Ireland's um, point, and my my advice was not meant to dissuade members from putting conditions forward if they think that. The, that that condition is necessary to make the development acceptable. That was the, the point of my advice, that, that that's the test for imposing a condition. So it wasn't meant to su suggest that um, members should be refusing this if, if they think that the condition should be imposed for genuine planning reasons. But, but as I said, the, the desire to see simply see an acceptable scheme made better is not an acceptable reason for imposing a condition. Thank you, Jim. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Crowd. Right, OK, back to you then, uh, that's the camera. Uh, thank you, Chair, for the councillors. It's more of a pr procedural question. Mm -hmm. If uh, we were minded to reject this in requesting a better design with many of the points that the uh, councillors Will this come back or is it sort of a take it or leave it situation? That's well, my question. Point of order, point of order Chairman, I, I wouldn't say that was probably a reasonable reason for refusal. I, so therefore, I don't think we'd even be able to refuse on that. Yeah, yeah. 
the, uh, I was going to mention that, and of course, don't forget though, we've got uh, a funding issue here, which we don't want to lose. So, so yeah, I'll, I'll just hand back to 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 uh, Hugh Williams just here for his comments. Hugh. Thank you, Chairman. The, the, the proposal before you has been made by the Dorset Coastal Forum, which is a partnership uh, including representation from approximately 400 organisations um, that, that's hosted uh, by Dorset Council. Uh, Dorset Council itself is clearly involved as, 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 as part of the applicant within this proposal. It is not this committee that is making the proposal. This committee's job is to determine the proposal that has been put to Dorset Council as the local planning authority. Um, if you if you refuse the 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 the, the proposal, um, then it will be for the applicant to determine uh, what 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 to do next. Um, but uh, it, it, the proposal should be judged on its planning merits. Um, the, the reasons that I, I yeah the reasons I'm recommending approval are, are, are set out in the report. If there are reasons for refusal um, th th that members wish to put, they need to be put and, and, and considered. Uh, but uh, as yet, I haven't heard a, a anybody um, clearly expressing a reason why this proposal uh, is either contrary to the development plan um, or uh, why other material considerations indicate that this is not an acceptable form of development. And that's, that's the. We need to focus on on whether this is in accordance with the development plan and whether there are material considerations that indicate it should be determined other than in accordance with the plan. But my advice to you as, as the planning officer is, is that it, it, it is in accordance with the development plan and it doesn't appear to me that there are material considerations suggesting that the application should be determined other than in accordance with the plan. Thank you Hugh, for that. By the way, anyone else wishing to speak? Uh, Councillor Dave Bowell, Chairman. OK, OK, Dave, would you like to come in now? Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, Hugh has basically said what I was going to say. Um, although I, I hear lots of negative comments and, and um, good ideas for, for what this plan should have had, um, we, we still need to be drawn back to the fact that this, you know, <laughs> um, what reason can I find to refuse it? Um, that I don't like it? It's, very <laughs> it's not necessarily good enough in planning terms to do that. And I feel that we're actually trying to do design by committee, which isn't something that um, we're, we're here for. So I hear all the negatives, um, I, I hear all the aspirations, but um, I can't find anything personally in planning terms to, to, to be negative about um, in terms of refusal. So I'm afraid I'm going to be supporting it. Um, so I'm sorry all of you out there if, if you disagree with me, but um, I can't see any reason to turn this one down. OK, and uh, thank you, uh, Councillor Bell. Do we have anyone other speakers? No, Chairman. Right, OK, remembering uh, members that we're voting on the application before us, not an aspiration for the future. So I've got a proposer and a seconder. And I will now take a vote by ro roll call. So I'm going to go with uh, Councillor David Bowell first. Yeah, minded to approve, Chair. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Kelvin Clayton. Mm, approved, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Susan Cocking. Approved, Chair. Thank you. Councillor mm. Jean Dunser. Approved, Chair. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Annie Garland. I'm against. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Paul Kimber. Against, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Louis O'Leary. For, Chairman. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Kate Weller. Uh, very reluctantly for Chairman. Thank you, Kate. Uh, Councillor Sarah Williams. Money to approve. Thank you. Uh, Councillor uh, uh, for Clarity, Councillor John Wurr. Money to approve, Chairman. Thank you. I'm also approving. So 
Uh, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine to two. Uh, is that maths correct, Anna? Yes, it is. Thank you. Having, dis having uh, debated and discussed this particular application and the uh, committee is minded to uh, approve the resolution, I now hand it over to Anna Lee to make the formal decision on this item. Thank you, Chairman. I confirm that I've heard the debate um, and the presentation. I'm not aware of any reason to differ from the committee's minded to resolution and this application will therefore be approved. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, and thank you for a very difficult uh, 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 debate and, uh, and, uh, and appreciate everyone's comments. OK, on to the next item on the agenda, and, uh, agenda item five, and that's for HI 1229 Custom House Key Weymouth Public uh, uh, Realm Enhancement, which has already been stated, has been deferred to a future occasion. And so we're not, uh, we're not uh, uh, debating on this. A particular item at this meeting. Item six on the agenda, of course, is urgent items. I've had no prior notification of any item of business which is considered to be urgent pursuant to section 100B4B of the Local Government Act 1972. And item seven on the agenda is exempt business. I have had no prior notification of any item viewed as likely to disclose exempt information within the meaning of paragraph three of the Schedule 12A to the Local Government Act 1972 as amended. Thank you very much for a long day, uh, members. I uh, really enjoyed that. Uh, and uh, and uh, thank you for your indulgence and your very good input. And I'd like to bring this meeting to a close. So thank you very much indeed. Thank you, our Chairman. Next, our next meeting, of course, will be in person.